Is time an illusion? I, let, I made a video about whether I think time would be an illusion, but I do think we don't have a complete view of time, of course. Um, but um, we have a pretty good approximation. But here's the thing, okay? Um, Matt, thou art that, said in a video, was talking to somebody, I think it was in the video I responded to about uh, time, and ultimately consciousness being an illusion, um, that the arrow of time, that time flows forward at this steady pace, um, was required for an idea of cause and effect, that there didn't seem to be a way to escape it. Now, I agree, for us humans, there's probably not a way to escape that. Certainly, we haven't escaped it yet. But I want to talk about this, okay? Let's just do a little logical uh, process here, common thing, where we will assume the principle we're considering and see where it takes us. So let's assume time can flow backwards, just freely. I mean, literally freely, like, like, you know, you wake up in the morning and time's flowing forward and then gets towards the end of the day and for whatever reason starts to flow backwards again. Let's just consider that. You know, forget the fact for the moment that that would mean there's some other kind of time, right? There would have to be a meta time that we're comparing the flow of time so that we could say it's going backwards. You know, forget that interesting, interesting um, logical conversation on that topic is possible. But let's skip that and just, uh, just, just go with this idea of, okay, so time can go back and forth, okay, freely. Let's just say it's doing that. It's ebbing and flowing, you know, if it goes this way and then starts to flow backwards. Okay. What would happen in that case? We get to the end of our day and time starts to flow backwards. We'll see all through the day, we're forming memories of what's going on. We get perceptions and in reaction to the perceptions, there's chemical changes in our brain, uh, neural networks change and form, and we form memories. We use the laws of physics to encode our memories. Okay, just like any recording device uses the laws of physics encoding memories. And then we get to the end of that day and time starts to flow backwards. So what happens? Well, if you run the physics backwards, then instead of storing the memories, you lose the memories. So as you're going backward in time, you'd be losing the memory. So let's say you get all the way back to the morning, and there you are with your orange juice and your coffee and your newspaper and you're listening to NPR, which I'm sure is what you all do in the morning. And you would have no clue that you'd already been to the end of your day because you would have lost all your memories on the way back. And then let's say time starts flowing forward again. Well, there'd be no discontinuity. It would start flowing forward from that very same point. And so you'd be going forward. And would you notice that you had gone forward and back? No, you wouldn't, because you'd start encoding memories here, and you'd have a continuous thing. And if you went halfway through the day and went back again, you know, not all the way to the morning, same thing. So the end result is, even if time was going back and forward, because we only store memories using physics traveling in one direction of time, it would all seem quite continuous. It's just like a, a, a movie on a, on a long strip of film. You know, the, the images are in that sequence. And if you watch the movie, it's going to look like it's going forward. If you, if you rewind and go forward again, the only reason you can tell that you've gone it you run it backward is because you're not the movie. If you are in the movie, you're just going to be forgetting things and then start remembering again. So why does time, in this case, if that was true, we notice that time would still seem to go continuously in, in one direction. And why would that be? Because we only store memories using physics in that one direction. Now, physics itself doesn't have any principles of why time can't flow backwards. And they make a big deal of this, and it's a principle of reversibility. And it doesn't destroy cause and effect, because what really happens is a set of phenomena that was the, considered the effect becomes the cause when you're going backwards in time. And so the real principle of cause and effect is not so much about the sequence of time going in a particular direction. It's about the continuity. So time could flow backward. You would not break this chain of continuity, and so you wouldn't really break the phenomena of cause and effect. But, of course, our concept of cause and effect might have to change. Now, if we could figure out a way in physics, that, considering that time can flow backwards, figure out a way to store memories in that reverse direction of physics, then possibly we could remember that we've been into the future. So you could prove this little hypothetical theory of mine if you could create a device and find out that it had memories stored of the future. Okay. 
I don't really suspect that's going to happen. And as I say, you know, this is just a, just a thought experiment. Uh, I'm not saying time really does this. I'm just pointing out that time could do something this radical and we wouldn't notice it. We would have no way to notice it. Right now we have no devices and obviously our body does not have any organs that notice would notice this kind of thing. And time would seem to go very steadily in one direction because that's the only direction we could record in. Okay, Our measurement devices would be imposing this sense of a constant uh, flow of time because we use physics to measure the time and therefore whatever way time flows, you know, if it speeds up or slows down or anything like that, to us it'll seem like a steady thing because that's what we use to encode our memories. So this kind of thing is as a result of looking at the embodied mind. You can realize that uh, our perceptions of the world are related to the kind of machine that our brain is, and our brain is what relies on physics in one direction. So even if it was going back and forth, we would experience it as only going in one direction. Fucking weird, huh?